Hi everyone, after my video the other week about where to park, I thought I'd do a video on how to park. On your driving test, you may very well be asked to park in a number of times, even four, five or six. So it is something that needs to be sorted quite well. A lot of people even who have full licenses tend to struggle parking. You see them on funny angles and you see them scraping wheels along curbs or even half on or half off when they don't really need to or, or, or want to. So today's video, we're going to show you how it's done. So what I'm actually going to try and do, I'm going to try and show you from a real eye view perspective of actually what we see. Dash cams, as I've always gone on about, distort the perspective of actually what we see. So what I've got set up, I've got a proper camera and I'm going to try and set this to the actual same sort of focal length as we would see normally, which on this crop sensor camera is about 35, maybe 36 millimetres. So here we go. Perfect. So, first thing then, after we've got the camera set up, what we're now going to do is use the curb as a reference. Where we see it in the windscreen is really our reference to how far or how close we are to the curb. And what you really need to do, you really need to practice first of all, maybe in a car park. If you were driving in between uh, some bays, the bay lines to the left of the car would appear in your windscreen exactly in the same position as the curb would be now. So this is an easy way to do it if you don't want to scrape your wheels for the first time. Your driving instructor should be able to give you this reference point and this reference mark. And if we look at this out in the windscreen, it's approximately from where I sit in the middle. Now, I know this camera is slightly to my left, but it's going to give you an idea of what I'm seeing. So remember, where the kerb is, approximately in the middle of the window, means that you're going to be reasonably close. And that's going to be virtually the same for most makes and models. We used to have a big four-wheel drive, and honestly, it was in the same position, approximately in the middle of the window for me. But it might change slightly depending on your seat and position in the car. If you're smaller, you're probably going to see it in a slightly different position um, than I would being reasonably tall. So the next thing to think about, we've got maybe a reference point of where we need to be when we're next to the kerb, but how do we judge when we're straight? Well, this is the actual problem that people usually struggle with. And I've gone on about this with Erin, when I've been teaching Erin about trying to not look down at the angle of the kerb. And this is the key. Everything that we see out in this windscreen, um, whether it be the kerb, whether it be the center line, it all seems to converge to a point up near those gates at the very, very end of the road. And that's what um, what we call a vanishing point. Um, it comes from, I remember doing art in school years ago on how to draw in perspective. And it's that convergence or seeming to be converging lines which often puts people off. If you look really close to the car when you're coming into the kerb, you won't see when you're straight. So what you really need to do is focus at the very end of the road once you're close enough. And people often stare down, and we've got a saying we use as driving instructors, hands follow the eyes. So if you keep staring down at the kerb, you're gonna keep heading towards it, and that's gonna end up ruining your tires and ruining your wheels. So 
to come in towards the kerb. Process as normal, we've chosen the correct place. What we're gonna do is check, signal if required, and we'll bring the car in gently, but also slowing down progressively and early. Slow down when you're out into the road, rather than when you're right next to the kerb. Try not to rush in. If you do slow down too late and you're really close to the kerb when you're at a higher speed, the small steering movement is going to have a bigger effect. Effectively, when the car is traveling faster, the steering becomes a little more sensitive. So try and slow down out in the road a little bit more. And only when you are less than walking speed, try and get really, really close to the kerb. So we're after being probably within a gutter's width. We've got a reference point. When we're there, we're gonna steer the steering wheel out to the right and then focus our eyes up at the very end of the road. And this is the key. We need to stop the car moving towards the curb or away from the curb. Try not to look, as I said, down at the curb at this point. Maybe glance at it just to check your reference point, but mainly focus at the far end of the road so you're gonna get the car straight, and that's key. Then only at this point, have a little look in the left mirror to check your distance. Try not to check in your left mirror as you're coming into the curb, because what actually happens as you position towards the curb, your car is angled and all you're gonna look at is where you've been. And you're not actually seeing where this front left wheel is in relation to the curb, and that's why people often hit it. So make sure you go in close, look up and get straight, check where you are once you're straight, and then you're done. Let's have a go. So, I'm just going to move away. No one's about, I'm not going to signal. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to go up to the other end of this road, probably past these two junctions, and have a little go at parking. But while we're here, have a nosy at where you see the kerb now in the windscreen. It's more over to this left side. So when we do get close to the kerb, we've got to bring it back to that position it was in before. So I'm checking, the lorry's not an issue, the curtains are over, so I'm not gonna signal to anyone. So I'm gonna slow down when I'm out, press the clutch, and now I'm gonna try and keep the car rolling very slowly until I'm close enough, and when I'm close enough, I do a right steer, straighten the wheels, looking up, and then keep rolling, check my left, yeah, position's good with the kerb, come to a stop. And it's as simple as that. We can also apply this same process to parking in next to the kerb on the right. If we have a look at the actual view out the windscreen again, this time the kerb is to my right hand side of my steering wheel. And again, you can get a reference point in the same way. So there's usually two points that you can have a look at in your windscreen that are gonna determine just how wide your car is. One in the center, which determines how close you are to the left, and then one to the right hand side. For me, it's down here by this vent, showing me how close it can be to the right hand side. So, I'm gonna move off in the same manner. I've got to negotiate this lorry, but then I'm gonna park next to the kerb on the right. So remember, we're gonna choose our place. I'm just gonna go past these two junctions again. Again, there's no real reason to signal and I'm going to try and slow before I get close to the kerb. When I've got my distance with my reference point I'll steer away from the kerb and my eyes are up where that fence is and I'm just moving the car slowly until I feel I'm not going towards or away. Checking my right mirror I'm absolutely perfect with the kerb so I can bring the car to a stop. Now, I hope this has helped. It's a simple task, but often one people struggle with. Let us know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.